Today is Sunday, January 8, 2023, the birthday of our mother, Lacey Leon Berge Fitzgerald. And I'm Sally Fitzgerald Olson, and this is Cherie Fitzgerald, Fitzgerald Hastings. Hastings. I'm married to Maynard, and Cherie is married to Curtis Hastings. And we want to record some memories we have of our mother. She would have been born 98 year, Earth years ago today. And we love her and we want to record some memories for you so you can get to know her and love her and appreciate her too, because she has a great impact in your lives. And the sooner you can recognize that, the more blessed you will be. So, so I want to show you this picture of her and uh, this is a picture of her. It's actually a pencil sketch that a man in Germany made. And she, oh, she was beautiful. Is it there? You can see how pretty she was. And she was a very popular girl. She was the youngest of boys. Let's name the boys. There was um, her Orson. brother. Orson was the oldest brother. And then Sylvan. Sylvan. And then Nephi. <laughs> Nephi. 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 And then a brother named Leo, Leo, who died at age three. And then her. And her mother was so happy to get her. And she used to tell me that when her brothers would go away and they were off for the day, she would go up on Bergie Hill behind the house. And she would sing and she would play house and she would make up songs and stories. And she learned to play by herself because there were, she had no sisters and the neighbors, the Kohlers, you know, you had to walk a good three or four, five, maybe, no, maybe a little longer to get there across the roundabout. So she played a lot alone by herself, but she really knew herself and was a very confident teenager and little girl wasn't she mm -hmm. yeah she had she grew up with so much love she was grandma martha bergie's best little friend and mom told me she would go visiting teaching with her mom as a very young child and she learned to love and appreciate grandma's friends and she had a very close relationship with her mother martha bergie and i'm so grateful because i had a very close relationship with my mother lacy and probably because of all of those effects, I have I was blessed my entire life. I never had teenage years where I didn't like my mom. She was always my best friend. We'd often stay up late at night when I was in junior high and high school talking with my mother. And I gained so much wisdom and so many blessings from that relationship. Well, and she used to tell us kids that we were her little dollies and she, she loved us. And I remember her saying, well, some of those moms are glad that school started and their kids are going back to school, but I have so much fun with my kids. I, I wish they were home and that we could be with them. And I know that Martha, her mother, thought that Lacey was her little dolly because she finally got a little girl. And Martha came from a very classy, grown-up world. Her, great, her grandparents raised her and she was very educated as you could be in Switzerland in about uh, the 18, right at the 1900 mark, 1900, 1900. And um, she had one brother and they, her grandparents were very strict. So when Martha got married in Utah and had these boys and she was married to a farmer, her life was very different than it was in Switzerland. And, and it was rough and tough with these boys going to school and learning all the things that boys in a farm town learn. And she finally had her little dolly. So I think our love of children comes a lot from Martha and from Nanny Lacey, our mother. Um, our mother was able to hear music extremely well. And although they were too poor to have a piano, the neighbors had a piano. And she was able to hear chords and someone showed her how to play some chords and she figured out chords and chord inversions. And by the time she was in about fifth grade, she was invited 
to play the music for the eighth grade school dance, right? So she became known in that little town of Midway as a little musician. In fact, the whole family was the family of musicians because right. Grandpa Fergie Samuel and Martha participated in music at church where choir directors led the music. So our grandpa loved singing and he was a good tenor and he loved leading the singing. Martha loved singing. She also played the piano. She would, you can imagine, she sang in German. In fact, if you look closely up there in the Bergie house, you might find those, uh, an old German book and maybe an old German song book. And although she was from Switzerland, she spoke Swiss German. So they would sing at night with the whole family. Orson played the trumpet mm -hmm. and Sylvan sang beautifully. Um, so I have a story that involves Sally. When Sally got married to Maynard and they were living in North Carolina, Sally was leading the singing. Well, there was a time in the church when we had 15 minutes of music singing to learn a song. And, and Samuel Berge was in charge of teaching that. It was in the morning during this, you know, remember in the old Sunday days, they, they'd go to church three, three times a day, right? Mm -hmm, Relief mm -hmm. Society priest, no, mm -hmm. priesthood, and then Sunday school, and then the sacrament. They'd go back three times. So during the Sunday school time, they would learn a song. And he was enthusiastic, and he would walk down the aisles, you know, and getting everybody to sing, you know, looking at the people, tapping the book. And so our mother did the same thing. So once, it Sally did that in North Carolina. Were you called to be the chorister? Probably, I. Yeah, probably. And I primary many times and I led the music otherwise too. And someone came up to her and said, there's only one time I've ever seen that happen and that was in Midway, Utah. And it was Samuel Berge, right? Now what's interesting even more about that is that Sally told our mother that story and my mother told me and I've never forgotten it. So I told it to Sally today this is why you need to write things down. And she can hardly remember that uh -huh. story. Uh -huh. But I think I have it in my journal about yeah. you. Yeah, after you reminded me, I have a vague memory, but I would never have brought it up if you hadn't have remembered. Mm -hmm. So, good. Thank you for remembering You're that. You're welcome. Um, I'm going to share a few of my musical experiences, and maybe that will help yes. you remember one of yours. Okay. Okay. So, um, I remember that... Uh, when I started to sing, that my mother, before I would go sing somewhere, she would say, come here, Cherie, let's have a little prayer. And she would say, let's have a little prayer. She'd say, let's I have a little prayer. I remember that too. And we would bow our heads and she would say it to teach me. And she taught me that any time that we were gonna do music, that our goal was to glorify Heavenly Father. So she always said that in the prayer. She would quote that scripture. Um, the glory be to thee, and we want to glorify thy name, and the glory be thine, not ours. And that was became my motto, my whole reason, right? To do any right. of this, it's just to make people happy. Mm -hmm. And so that's what we would do. Um, her whole motive in music was because, well, she got feedback from people, but the feedback was, you have made a difference for me. You've made my day. Thank you for playing. You want to tell the story about coaxing? coaxing? Uh, my, our mother taught us that whenever we were asked to share our talent, singing or playing the piano, if someone asks us to play, we should not have to be coaxed. Coax means that people have to beg you to do it and beg you to do it. This is what I've told to many children growing up outside my family and our own children. You, it's very consistent with what she said. We have these gifts from Heavenly Father to bless others. And you should always use your gifts and never have to be coaxed or begged to share your talent. Share them freely. And that has been a huge blessing and has been passed through the generations from me and you. And we know that it's because of our Father in Heaven that we have these gifts. And Mom exemplified that. She would always play at people's funerals. She would sing at people's funerals. Once she told me she wished she had a nickel for every funeral she had sung at and every permanent, hair permanent, that she had given just from her own free will to go and help people. So um, one of the things she did 
she would freely decide to go to an assisted living place and play the piano for the people. There was a time they were called old folks homes. <laughs> so she would say, let's go to the old folks homes. And she would call them up and say, we're coming over. And she would take you and she would take me. Sometimes she would take the young women or young mm -hmm. men. But that's where I learned to sing in front of people. And we always sang, we always did it on the 4th of July and or around patriotic time. And we do all the patriotic songs. And not only did I learn to sing, and I learned to share, but she would say, Sheree, just because their hands are old and wrinkled, they, they still have a heart. They're still human inside. Go and touch them. If they don't look, if they're not pretty, if they look old and ugly, or they have bad breath or something, it doesn't matter. You go up and you, she would say, you go up and you touch their hands and you, you let them know that you care about them. And I thought that was a great lesson to learn. Did you ever go to the rest homes with her? Yes, and mom uh, had a love for people. And I am so grateful some of that came to me because it's so fun to love people. It's what the Savior taught us to do. It's the essence of the gospel. And I remember in Roosevelt, mom would come up to the elementary school and there was a long narrow room with rows of chairs about 10 across and about 10 deep and just a little and children would file in and mom would sit up at the front on the piano and she would sing songs with the children. She would look at the children and her hands would just go and she would sing patriotic songs, Christmas songs. And I remember being so happy that my mom sang those songs and we put, she actually put on performances at uh, Christmas time and at patriotic times. And I remember sitting in that gym of Roosevelt Elementary, which I don't think is there anymore, and and singing songs in the big gym when all the children came together from all the different classrooms to recycle through that room for 30 minutes every week and crying as posters, big slides of America the Beautiful, Waves of Grain, Amber Waves of Grain, and crying and feeling such a love for America and a gratitude. And I remember when we decided to move from there, the people gave mom this beautiful little blue necklace with little flowers. And I remember mm -hmm. mom was sad that she had to leave, but I had learned so much. And lo and behold, when I was in San Diego, my kids were in elementary, they cut all the music from the school and I said, I know what I can do. I can go volunteer and teach those children. So I did that for many years in San Diego, ages, and we had quite, we did performances just because I modeled what I saw my mom doing. And I, it was wonderful. I used a lot of the primary songs, but I would change to the words just enough so it wasn't too religious for the school. Like whenever I hear the song of a bird, I'm glad that I live in this beautiful world where I am privileged to be instead oh, of Heavenly idea. Father gave to me. I, and I, I would dream that some of those little children would go up and grow up and talk to missionaries and find the restored gospel of Jesus Christ. And they would sing that song or have their children would sing that song in primary and that they would know, they would know those songs eventually because they came to the restored gospel. But it's because of my mother that that happened. I didn't know that's how you thought. So I got a job teaching school in California and when was this, 1989 maybe? And so I taught all the kids from kindergarten to sixth grade, sixth grade music. And I taught them all different kinds of music, including patriotic. But I would pick songs from the hymn book. And one of them I picked was, what's the one about, let us oft speak kind words to each other. Kind words are the songs of the heart. Yeah. Like that. And I thought, someday, someone will invite, invite them to church. And they'll hear that song and they'll go, that sounds familiar. This is where I'm supposed to be. Yeah, yeah. And then they'll learn how to talk nicely to each other. We right. need to sing that song more. Yeah. But that's the motive, right? Yeah. That's the whole motive. So we, <clears throat> mom's music was very important in our lives. And I realized that I grew up with so much beautiful music that whenever I go anywhere into a store or walking, <clears throat> I hear music. I pick up and I listen I to that music. Too. And, and it's such a blessing to me. And words come to my mind, of course. Anyway. So, so I wanted to say, when you were talking about the way she played, 
she would play the chords and look up, just like if this was the piano, and she would look she around the room at the rest home or the assisted living home, and she would do the same thing in the school. And she, and then she'd take one hand and go, everybody yeah. sing with, with the one hand. And then she'd come back and play some more, and she just kept those chords going. It was really happy. It was, uh, such she a gift. Wasn't un, she wasn't struggling, and she made it like the people were more important than the piano. Yes. Right? Not like, she what can I people. play? It's like, what can we all do together that's fun and this is just going to help us? This is just the sand on mm -hmm. the beach. Let's go to the beach now. Exactly. <clears throat> she had such a gift to, and it, she didn't have to look at it at all. And the piano was full of keyboards. It wasn't just a couple of fingers. She it was like full an full accompaniment. Yeah. With the sounds of the birds and the trains and the deep sounds. She could, what a gift. I have never met anyone in my life like her in that area than most areas. So um, when she was 70, it was on her birthday, so that would have been 28 years ago, you and myself and Shelly secretly flew home for the weekend for her birthday and York was living there and we planned a surprise birthday party for her. And I have that picture there and she's wearing red and she's sitting at the piano. So we invited, remember, the whole ward was there, all the adults, mm -hmm. right? Lots Do of you friends. Remember the, Everybody the, loved Jay and Lacey. They were just sitting there, and she just sits down and says, well, I'll play you all a song. And she starts playing a song, and they start. That was one cool thing. Today, there's so much music. You might know a song someone else knows because there's so much to choose from. Back then, <clears throat> what they played on the radio was what you knew, or what you heard at church is what you knew. Mm -hmm. So, you know, whether it was Red River Valley, or um, um, I Need Thee Every Hour, or maybe a song from World War II, or a song from yeah. the 1960s, right? And all these people would just sing along, and they're just laughing. So, she had this little joke that I didn't learn about, and we didn't learn about until older. Our father, Jay Sheldon, didn't sing, but... He really didn't sing. Did he sing? He didn't sing. He, I didn't, he always supported mom, but he didn't sing. That so I she heard. said, everyone, my husband's going to sing you a song. And I thought, what's dad going to sing? So she played this very flowery, full, beautiful introduction and ends with this note of suspension. And my father goes, could you do that again, please? Remember? Right? So then, his and everybody going, ready. what's he gonna sing? What's he gonna it's like this is exciting. He's never we've never heard music come out of Jay. So she plays it again and he really was milk in the audience, right? And then he goes, Oh, by the way, the name of this song is Shepherd's Serenade. So she plays it again. Da -da 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 ding and he goes Yes, that was funny. <laughs> <laughs> but I thought, yeah. what a fun party today if we all just sat around the piano and everybody sang and laughed and called out a song and somebody played it. Mm -hmm. they, that Midway had a, a fun a fun time when she was there playing that piano all those, all, for all the funerals yeah. and the weddings, parties, and the dances, and the school parties. And yeah. I remember going to Midway to mom's 50th or 60th uh, high school reunion. And we went into this room and there were all these, what seemed to me, very elderly people, elderly people. And, and people came up to me and just said, you'll never know the influence that Lacey Berge had on us. She was the life of every party and she would sing and we would have so much fun. And I heard from these people they're, from their mouths, their sincere gratitude for mom and the joy she brought to them. But mom had, a, uh, it was important to her to not be cocky, to not be proud, to not be, oh, I'm really good and I'm better than you. In fact, some, oh, oh, I remember I went to college and I was having a great time associating with some great musicians. You've heard of some, Kurt Bester, Sam Carden, they were my peers. They were a year or two older, but we were in the same music associations. And and so I'm having a great time. And I come home from college and our mom didn't really need read the music. 
right? She, she played, but she really didn't read it. So I said, mom, I want to learn this song. And so she goes, okay, if you'll give me some time, I'll learn it. So she started learning how to read probably at about age 45 ish and worked at that, but it humbled her, but she was already humble. But what I learned, I, I, I never thought about it until later, but my mom was as good as or a better musician than my wonderful friends that I was associating with, right? That she, and she didn't know it and she didn't act like she knew it. She was very happy to serve and humble and used it as a gift to make others happy. She didn't, she didn't want to be the best. She just wanted to have a fun time at the party. And not only that, she was very good at making other feel, people feel comfortable. I remember in the ward as a youth, and then when I got married and came home and went to the same ward I grew up in and I knew these good people, there were other musicians there who were kind of like a normal musician. They could play the organ, they could lead the music, and, and yet they could see mom's great gift, but mom, always made their those people feel so those musicians feel so loved and like not to be afraid in her presence she had a gift to do that and that's important because it helps people you have you have a blessed influence on people when you can do that and they are comfortable around you even though you're superior than they but she didn't think that way yeah, she, she thought, didn't think that way i can't read music i'm not as good as you and she had her she well, she was scared moments, you know, mm -hmm. and no, you can do it. But as long as she remembered she was just there to bring happiness, then it just oozed out. So when you were in mutual, I let's say I was about probably 10, mm -hmm. nine or 10. So York started going to mutual. So I had to go along or nobody would have been home with me. Mm -hmm. I don't know why. I don't know what dad was, but I would go. But I had the advantage because back then, they had her teach some songs to all the teenagers. So she would teach them songs from the musical, like from My Fair Lady, I'm getting married in the morning, right? Mm -hmm. And all the songs from The Sound of Music, remember? Mm -hmm. Any of those great shows back in the 60s and 70s, she would teach the kids the those kids songs and I would go along. That's how I learned them. That's yeah. how I learned those songs. Um, I wanna talk about her and the boys. I think that she did not even get it. I don't not I think she didn't get how much all the boys loved her. She just her mother told her, now honey, if they ask you out once, you should go. Don't turn that boy down. Because back then, dating was very social. You all all you did is you went to an event with the boy and then he brought you home, right? And you and if you kind of had a good time, then you would go again. But mom always told me, now you say yes, you go out with those boys and you be nice to them and, and don't hurt their feelings, right? But then, it, 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 yeah, that can cause, that's not always great. But she really had a lot of people that liked her because she was nice to everybody, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, I um, want to talk about how you would play the organ and violin or, in, at home with mom. Yes. Okay. Um, the other thing in Mutual, I remember mom led the music in Mutual and I played the piano. So we would, that was my first time to play, except in junior Sunday school many years earlier, I was able to play in, in junior Sunday school when I was only about 11 or 12. But then when I was in Young Women's, we called it Mutual, I would play the piano and mom would lead the music. And I remember being in a road show and I was up on stage at the age of 14 with my bishop and we learned the song pick a little talk a little pick a little talk a little cheep 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 fuck a lot for the one more and that was really fun and i have memories of doing music with my mom at, at mutual and i had those those i remember coming home we didn't have an electric garage door opener my job was to get out of the car mom was driving go open the big double car garage door and i just remember feeling so loved so happy such a connection with my mom um as i opened the garage door and thought that was such a good time at mutual and then we'd go in and go to bed yeah just happy happy she, secure feelings that's how I and in the open too. temple pageant mom led the balcony chorus she oh. did so many wonderful things and i played the violin and and i remember driving with mom to the oakland temple pageant to practice from walnut creek to oakland's interstate center and we'd practice 
and those are wonderful times. So what was the question you asked me? Well, was you play it? the violin and you would play the piano at home and right around like 10 feet away was the organ and you would both play and I would just listen and run around with the little gray poodle dog we had and that's where I learned to love the music and I learned the songs. You two would play together. And even though mom's first organ was very small, only a couple octaves and the piano we'd play. And But my cherished spiritual memories on Saturday morning, we'd go to our building and the chapel was empty, the chapel was quiet and I would play the organ and mom would play the piano and we would play hymns together. And that was a spiritual feast. And my testimony grew as I played those hymns with my mom. And I remember we, we did this for about an hour on a lot of Saturday mornings. I really don't know how many, but they surely impacted my life. Then we played I'll Never Walk Alone, You'll Never Walk Alone. I remember and that. And some of those. And I'm so grateful that we took the time to do that because my testimony grew and those are my one-on-ones with mom that are invaluable to me. Well, and she never did that with me. I didn't have that experience because I didn't keep playing the piano. But um, you would play the piano and I would stand behind you and look at the words and then I would sing the songs, right? Mm -hmm. I would sing the songs. Um, that's how I would sing. That's how I, I would um, sing. We'd do that for an hours, wouldn't we? You would play the piano and whatever you were playing, I would just look at the words and sing. Isn't that we we did that all oh, fun? Yes, and remember? then I remember when you were little and you were cute and you seemed so interested in the music. Our fireplace ledge stepped up about eight inches on a little cement platform in front of the fireplace, and Cherie would stand up there. And the first song I remember you singing is "Oh, you, you beautiful doll, you great big beautiful doll." One, two, three, four. Let me put my arms around you. I could never live without you. Oh, you beautiful doll, you great big beautiful doll. If you ever leave me, how my heart would it break? I'd love to squeeze you, but I'm afraid you'll break. Da da da. Oh, 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 you beautiful doll. Yeah, that's how we would play. Uh, and then you would play Shirley Temple songs. Yeah, Shirley Temple songs. Yeah, Shirley. On the good ship. Lollipop, it's a sweet trip to the candy shop where bonbons play on the sunny beach of Peppermint Bay. Lemonade stands everywhere, Cracker Jack bands fill the air and there you are, happy landing on a chocolate bar. That's a good song. <laughs> Not if you're trying to lose weight, though. But And then York would play the trumpet. Mm -hmm. And he had a good voice. He's a good bass. He, if he, we just he gave does him have away. a good voice. If he would sing more, he was good. He would play the trumpet, and Mom would be on that little tiny two-octave organ. You would play the piano. I would be singing. And then we had the little poodle dog, the little gray Terry was his Terry, name. Um, we named him after Shelly's first boyfriend. I'd forgotten that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what we did on Saturday night. Isn't yeah. That, wasn't that fun? And we entertained ourselves and had great family times. Yeah. So, well, so true. I just think I want to um, kind of close with saying that truly our mom wanted to use her music to glorify Heavenly Father. And even though she loved every minute of, and received so much joy, it was the right kind of joy. It was the kind of joy like I give to you, you give back to me. I'm happy about it. It wasn't like, I want to be better than you and put you down. It there was none of that. Was was none none of that. Of that and sometimes in music, there is that competition feeling. Yeah. But, and Cherie's right. She would always have, we'd always have a prayer before any performance or anything we did. Uh, and mom had such a love for everyone. Now, one thing she did say, cause you know, I did grab onto some great opportunities. Wish I would have done more, but with you know the young ambassadors and singing at BYU and I would travel and but when I got into the tab choir she said Cherie you're really picking up where I kind of left off you're doing things I wish I could have done and I thought oh you wish you could have done but I think if we get to have a little message here we hope that her posterity 
will be sweet about your many talents, right? And use mm -hmm. it to glorify the to Lord. Use it to glorify That's the why Lord. You love him. Let that run through the family more than being better than everybody else or something. Let's glorify the Lord with it. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a lot to say about our mom, um, but we're going to say more other times, and we hope that those of you who know her will say some things about her. But today we talked about the music. Yeah. yeah. As we knew it. Yeah. And I remember mom did teach piano lessons later when I was in high school, and I would be inspired by listening to her piano students, and she did learn how to read music and could do that, and she had one beautiful student playing Claire de Lune, and I always dreamed I could learn to play that song. Um, did you learn it yet? Probably not, <laughs> but my girls did, so that's yeah. okay. Same difference? Um, <laughs> Uh, let's see, there was something I was going to say, but I can't remember, so... Well, just in case you don't know, we're talking about Lacey Berge Fitzgerald, who grew up in Midway, whose mother is Martha and father Sam Berge. Happy birthday to our dear mother. 